Hey guys, what's going on? Today we are going to be reviewing Etsy versus Shopify month seven. If you don't know, I have been taking you guys through the creation of an entirely new store, both on Etsy and on Shopify, and just comparing what we make, what we pay in fees, and the pros and cons of the platforms. And so um, if you've been following along, here's the series here, if you haven't, so you can catch up from the first six months. This month, we're gonna be talking about the seventh month, which is November, and also we'll be touching on Black Friday numbers and how things went there. So I'm pretty excited to jump into this one. November was our best month ever, and so I'm pretty excited seven months in to have hit some of the milestones we hit. So I will share all of that with you guys. Um, so let's jump in. All right, so first things first, we're gonna pull up the spreadsheet here and I'm gonna show you where we're at with this. So in November on Etsy, we had 60 listings. We had 1,618 visits, so not our highest, but second highest. It looks like 6.5% conversion rate, which is the highest conversion rate we have had so far. Total orders, also the highest of 105 total revenue not our highest but that's because um there were some pretty major sales that were run during black friday so we got more orders but less revenue the great thing about digital products though is there's no real profit margin like it's a hundred percent profit margin so no matter what you do you're still making money um, revenue minus taxes and vat um, the seven seventy nine ninety seven is how much we had to um pay in taxes and VAT. On-site ads, um, again, we're just at a dollar a day there, $29.85. Off-site ad spend was only $3.59 this month, which this is charged based on purchases. So you don't get charged a fee unless somebody makes a purchase from an ad, from clicking on an ad that Etsy has run. So it's kind of a nice way to run ads without the risk of running ads because like if you've ever run Facebook ads or anything like that, which we do not run ads, but if you've ever run ads like that, it's a total crapshoot. Like you may have success or you may completely target the wrong people and not get anything out of it except for having spent a lot of money. So um, the way that Etsy does that is definitely a perk um, of using Etsy. Um, so our total um, ad spend revenue was 266.82 and this is broken down $242.63 of that came from on-site ads. So that was a really great return on investment there. And then $24.19 came from off-site ads. So again, I mean, you know, 7.5% is the um, click-through rate on the on-site ads. The off-site ads, I figure a little bit differently. Um, they are based because it's really 100% click-through rate because if somebody clicks it and purchases it, that's the only time you get charged. And so the way that I figured this is how much we spent versus how much we made. So we had a 14.8% return on the dollar, basically. Um, Etsy fees, 157.64. So that's our second highest in fees. Uh, and then our total net profit was 867.26. So you, the revenue was 1138.35, but the net profit was 867.26. So the total difference in gross versus net was 271.09. Um, still a really great month. We were up month over month, and um, I think our second highest month ever. So pretty good. Uh, so total so far for the year, starting basically May the first, is almost $5,000. Um, it's over $5,000 if you take total revenue, but almost 5,000 for what we have actually pocketed. Or I say we, if you know our story, we don't actually sell on Etsy. I have a girl that sells for me on Etsy. I give her all of my stuff and she lists everything. She does everything because um, I'm not on there anymore. So, um, so that's Etsy. Let's go over to Shopify. And so this is my store that I run. We have 47 listings. The reason the difference in numbers is because we do not do duplicate listings on our Shopify store. If it's there, it's just there. 
Um, on Etsy, it's okay to list something two or three times in different ways to try to attract different buyers. Um, because people are very visual, sometimes what picture might attract one person isn't gonna attract the other. So that's why on Etsy, it's okay. Um, but with, on, with Shopify, we just do one listing per each thing. So 47 listings, 8,008 visits. This is the first month we've actually gone down in visits. Um, conversion was 1.5%. Total orders was 166. So that's like our third highest month ever. Total revenue was 2867. So that's our second highest month in revenue. Um, we'll talk about this revenue from Kajabi in just a second. Taxes and VAT were $34.36. Shopify credit card fees, which that's the fees that they charge you um, for processing credit cards, which is pretty, I mean, like you, you have that on Etsy and you have that on Shopify. Um, revenue minus the credit card fees is $27.53.13. Shopify fees are $58 right now for us, and that's because it's $39 a month, plus we pay $10 a month for App Store, which is our subscription service because I have a membership for my products so that if people want to pay monthly and have access to everything in the shop and everything new, um, then they handle all that for me. So for 10 bucks a month, um, they have a free version, but then once you hit $500 or more in subscriptions, you have to pay. So um, that's that. And then the $9 is also part of the membership and that is the, it's called for locksmith. And that is how I create my membership side of my website so that I can have a login there for anybody that has the membership or lifetime access so they can log in and access everything for free. So that is why my fees are 58. If you're just doing a regular Shopify store, it's just $39 a month. And I'm actually January 1 changing the $39 a month. I'm going to go ahead and do the annual for that. It's a little bit of a chunk of change, but it saves you like $120 a year. So I'm definitely going to upgrade there. Um, PayPal fees were $14.48. Most of the fees in PayPal are, again, like credit card processing fees. And then there's some fees in there. Um, most of my people who purchase from other countries, they purchase on PayPal and PayPal switches the money over from whatever dollar that they pay into the US dollars. Um, no offsite ad spends. We haven't spent any money on ads other than this trial that we did here, which was a total flop. Um, <clears throat> lesson learned there. Uh, net profit, according to Shopify, was $2,646.29. And then and that is correct like that's what we had but then our total actual profit for the month with shopify was four thousand five hundred and eight dollars and 29 cents um and i do want to point this out this 221.44 is our total all-in fees on shopify on etsy it was 271.09 so i want you to look at the difference here so 867.26 and 271 dollars in fees and processing fees and all that kind of stuff 2646 and only 221.44. So the fees are less on Shopify and we made three times as much, more than three times as much. And then if you add in the Kajabi, it's 4508. So let's go back to Kajabi. So I did start listing my courses on Kajabi and I will show you um, where my courses are. So these are the courses that I have listed on the Windy Joe right now. Um, they're still being built out. Not everything that is included in the courses is actually even available yet. It's all like in pre-sale right now. But what I did was because the master resale license is $897, I wanted to create a payment plan for that. So what I did was I came over here and created an option for people to put those on a payment plan. And this is for somebody who wants to start their own PLR business. So they can, it's master resale rights. They can take my products, they can turn around, start their own business with them and sell them as PLR products, which is the done for you products. Um, it's basically geared towards people who want to start a business. But you know, 897 is a big chunk of change for anybody. So I wanted to offer payment options. Well, there wasn't a way to do that on Shopify that was like neat and clean. And because I was already setting up Kajabi, for my courses, I was able to go ahead and just add this in um, for anybody that wanted that master resale license. Well, I did sell several master resale licenses as well as lifetime access passes 
through the Kajabi website, but they're still part of MW Co. So I went ahead and included that here. Um, I don't know, I may just keep it as a separate line item just to kind of continue to show you guys how that is working because it is another form of making money with digital products um, if people are purchasing courses and those types of things. So I may keep it as a line item. Let me know what you guys think. If you want me to continue to keep this as a line item or if you want me to just focus on the Shopify side of things. It doesn't matter to me, but I wanted to show you uh, because these were all either master resale licenses or lifetime access to everything that's on my Shopify store. Uh, these were, they, they are going to get the courses from purchasing these, but that's not why they were purchasing them. So if that, hope that makes sense. So anyway, so the total profit um, from Shopify side of things was $4,508.29 in the month of November. <clears throat> so our net profit according to Shopify is uh, including what we did with Kajabi in November is almost $19,000 in seven months. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, seven months. So almost $19,000 in seven months on Shopify and almost $5,000 on Etsy. So again, like we've kind of already proven this, Shopify far outperforms Etsy. And I think people are scared of Shopify because of that $39 a month fee. But ultimately, first of all, if you use the link that's in the description, you get three months for a dollar a month using my link. So that helps you kind of get started without having to pay that $39 a month, which is exactly what I did when I started. I used somebody's link and I got the dollar a month for three months, which helped me um, be able to you know, set it up and get, uh, get it for free. But, um, not free, but dollar a month. But this $39 is still less, even if you're not paying for ads, it's still less than what you pay for all of your listing fees and transaction fees and all that kind of stuff on Etsy. Um, it all comes out in the wash. Yes, it's all at once, and yes, it's a little scary, but you literally can pay month to month and cancel it if it's not going good. Uh, so Shopify, hands down, the winner. But Etsify, Etsify, <laughs> that's a new one. Etsy is definitely easier because they do hold out all your taxes and submit those for you. That is the easy part. I did just do a video explaining how to do VAT and taxes. I can't remember if I posted it on this channel. If I did, I'll link it up. If I didn't and you guys want to see that, let me know and I will get it posted for you. Um, so this is, this is how things look. Let's go actually inside of um, Etsy and Shopify and I will show you guys how everything looks in here. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this is a glance at Etsy's dashboard and I wanna show you this. So the revenue here is $1,016.08 and you'll notice here it says 1138.35 and that is because in that revenue, like at a glance, they do not include this um, here and they don't include, um, there's something else that they don't include in there. So if you want to see your true, um, like true numbers, then you have to go over to your monthly statement and click down on this. And so then you can see that your total sales were 1138.35 and here you go, Sal sales tax and VAT. <clears throat> is what they take out. So that becomes 1,058.38. And then again, I don't know, cause that, it was all the way down to 1,016. So maybe it takes away the marketing too. I think that might be what it is. It takes away the marketing. Cause, but um, I'm not sure how they get that number on the first page versus this, but you can see here, obviously we have no shipping because everything is digital, but um, this is how all of the fees break down. Listing fees are 20 cents per listing. So I wanted you to see this, $27.80. So it's about $10 less per month to have an Etsy store than it is to have a Shopify store with just the basic fee. Then you add the processing fee of 3%, which is the credit card fees. So that's basically the same. The transaction fee is what gets you 6.5% of the order total excluding tax. And so Etsy takes 6.5% of every sale in fees for posting everything on the platform. 
Um, so that is basically where you get it. Now you do have the share and save fund refund, which is 4%. So if you're selling on Etsy, you definitely should take advantage of this. This is basically, you have a link that you share to social media. And if somebody purchases from that link back to your store, then they're going to refund you 4% for that order. And so if you're exclusively selling on Etsy, um, and you want to drive traffic to Etsy, then definitely take advantage of this. It'll save you 4%, which would take those transaction fees down to 2.5% basically of an order. Um, so that's kind of what things look like inside of Etsy right now. And then let's go inside of Shopify. Okay. So this is at a glance, you know, the conversion rate went up, total orders went up, total sales went up and online store sessions were down just a hair. Um, I did want to show you guys the marketing because I did talk about, um, in that last video about how we drive traffic to our Shopify store, uh, and how there's some glitches with Pinterest. And so I just want to show you last month on here because I'm then gonna take you over to Pinterest and show you. So this basically keeps track of every platform that drives traffic to your site and how much people purchase based on those clicks. So Google was top this last month in sales um, and they were 764.59, 537 sessions, 23 orders, and the conversion rate was 4.28. Direct to my website means that somebody typed directly in the web address or it was not be able to be traced directly to another website but they clicked on a link that took them to my website is 535.73 and 1392 sessions 66 orders and 4.74 percent conversion rate it's interesting the purchase per um, visit from google is way higher than the purchase that is from direct to store but I feel like this gets influenced because there's a lot of people that are members or have lifetime access that their total purchase price is zero every time they come. And that's why number one, that the sessions are higher here. And number two, that they, um, you know, the, this average comes way down because if somebody goes on and buys 20 things for zero dollars because they have lifetime access, then it's going to bring the average price down. So that's why that price is so much lower. <coughs> um, but you can see all the different sites that people come from. I don't even know what Raindrop is, to be honest with you. Um, but somebody came here from there. Uh, this is from my email marketing here. So that's a pretty decent amount coming from email. And But here's Pinterest. And I want to show you this because... Pinterest organic, it claims zero dollars, right? But 5,493 sessions. Well, let me take you to Pinterest and show you. And um, this is what I was talking about in the last video that I did talking about Pinterest was the fact that, um, I'm going to leave this at the last 30 days because it's the same number, but the fact that it's still in beta. And so things are not connecting correctly somehow between the two platforms because um, according to Pinterest, we had almost $300 attributed to Pinterest in the last month, which this was from November, even though this is last 30 days. Um, so you can see page visits were way up, add to cart was way up, checkouts, average order value, and the number of purchases. And so this is all organic, this is not paid. These say that they're paid again, but I feel like this is more of like the leftover from the free ones I did because we haven't paid for ads and none of these actually converted to checkouts, like none of this, this stuff. So, um, but these all converted. So 2.8% page visits. Once they visited my page, 52% went on to checkout and there were 10 checkouts. So, you know, it's pretty interesting though that this is here versus them saying that nothing happened here. All that to say, that's kind of what the numbers look like there. Let's go in and look at Black Friday numbers really quick. Um, let me go on here and show you. So on Shopify, we had 1,091 online store sessions for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So that's gonna be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's a four day frame period. Almost $800 in sales, 27 orders, 2.29% conversion rate. And I will show you, so here is the, sh that's Etsy. 
you know, just a second. Let me go on here. Here's Shopify. So, um, of our 8,000 visits, a thousand of them came in that four day period and 27 orders and $800. So 800 times four would be 3,200, 800 times three would be 2,400. So like three, between a third and a fourth of our orders all came in during Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And Etsy was very similar. Um, 205 visits, 8.3% conversion rate, 17 orders, and 300 um, total dollars in sales over that Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend. So this one's closer to a fourth, and this one is more closer to a third, um, between a third and a fourth. So, um, you know, that's how Black Friday affected the stores. Now, Honestly, I'm super happy with the Black Friday, Cyber Monday numbers because again, we're not in the gift niche at all. Like maybe somebody's gonna gift a digital planner to somebody or gift a business to somebody like, hey, start a business. But most likely people that are shopping our products are shopping simply because we were having sales and they're preparing to start a business because the economy sucks right now, you guys, and people need extra streams of income and you know, I started this whole channel to teach you guys how to earn passive income. And it has definitely kind of taken on this whole life of really teaching you guys the digital side of things because it is probably one of the easiest ways to earn passive income because it truly does become passive. Um, I have done network marketing. I have done, you know, building things like from scratch and selling them. I have drop shipped print on demand, I think I've done all the things and I have made good money doing all of them. But combining the money that is made with the ease of running the business, digital products is hands down probably the easiest one we've ever done. So <clears throat> just saying, this is if you're thinking about starting a side hustle, this is definitely the way to go. Um, I use Canva very religiously to create most of my products, larger planners and stuff. I use Keynote and um, I do tutorials with everything. I will tell you that if you're wanting to start a business, I will link up all of my memberships, all the options down below. Um, you absolutely don't have to buy into a course. You can do, you know, just individual products. If you're like, hey, I want to start selling planners, then just go buy a planner template and you can edit it and sell it as your own. So that is why I started selling the products that I started selling and decided to kind of follow this whole journey was because my entire channel was around helping other people make money. And so it made sense to do something that fit in with my current niche. Um, which isn't to say that my mind doesn't go a thousand different directions with, oh, I could start a digital store around this one idea or this one idea or like a print on demand product that I see that I'm like, oh, this would be good. Or, you know, I mean, like my mind never stops thinking of other ideas. So if there are other things you guys want to see besides the digital product side of things, let me know. I am going to be doing a video um, in January that will recap all of 2023. And I'm gonna break down all of my streams of income and show you guys where everything comes from, how we hit the numbers that we hit. Uh, I'll kind of talk about like what we quit this last year, like things that we just decided, you know what, these were not profitable, um, these are not worth the time and energy, and things that we added this last year to add to our portfolio. I'm constantly shifting, my husband and I both, um, we're very adventurous. We're not afraid to try things. And, um, so in that there's definitely been some new things that have been added and then some things that were like total flops that were like, nope, not going to do that again. So I'm excited to share that video with you guys. So that'll be coming up. Um, I'll be sharing more about the YouTube channel and how much that is paying me and the monetization that has happened from that. And, um, yeah. So if there's anything else you guys want to see or hear about, Make sure to put it in the comments. I am working on the more in-depth Pinterest video, um, which will be coming out hopefully in the next week or two. It's the holidays and we're traveling a little bit. So, you know, 
just keep that in mind. But anyway, plus I'm also running my businesses. But I uh, hope you guys have an amazing week. Thank you for being here and, um, you know, subscribing and liking and all those things and your support because you are why I do what I do. So hope you guys have a great day. I will talk to you soon.